Continuing off the previous what if on if 19 and 20 were who Trunks warned about, we go into what if 17 and 18 performed Shugyo or Ostia training together with Kuririn after the Cell arc. If you didn't see the previous what if, you can go watch it and come back after. But the main takeaway relevant for this part is that 18's more subservient role there led to her having a greater desire to become stronger and perform Shugyo with Kuririn, as well as 17 being destroyed and then being revived a lot later. With them starting to all train together a few years after the Cell arc, they also didn't bond with 16 in this scenario, so 17 neither gains the desire to be a park ranger nor meet his wife. With how Super treats a 17 that had done little Shugyo at all, or how Toei treats them with the gains made by 18 and GT from on and off sparring with Kuririn, it'd be easy to go crazy with their gains. But for the sake of sticking by what's consistent with the manga, while acknowledging how much room these two have to grow, with how powerful they were already, I'd say they'd end up more or less on par with Super Saiyan to Goku by the time of the Majin Buu arc. As for Kuririn, having sparred consistently with both, and the level of key tension hands Shinki Koho possessed, showing how relevant the Earthlings can be in the right circumstances, I'll say Buu arc Kuririn ends up in between the power of the Saiyan's base and Super Saiyan states, but this won't be relevant to the scenario beyond him feeling quite confident when hearing the no Super Saiyan rule for the Tenkaichi Budokai, yes, Fidel would still blackmail Gohan into joining, and despite not being the global hero he was in the main timeline, Mr. Satan's position as the prior Tenkaichi Budokai's champion still gives him the influence to make things as they were normally. Most of the events prior to the Dragon Team arriving at Babidi's spaceship remain unchanged beyond 17 taking Hila's place in the Budokai, and 17 being interested in observing the Son Goku he'd heard Gero say so much about, as well as excited to perhaps face him later. Because of this, 17 would leave with Kaioshin and the rest, whereas 18 would stay to win the prize money. The only difference with the Battle Royale is 18 is strong enough to knock Goten and Trunks out of the ring without needing to rely on exposing their disguise. When arriving at Babidi's spaceship, Seventeen would be targeted by Dabra as disposable due to the latter not sensing anything from him when trying to get rid of all but the three strongest. But Seventeen's pride in his clothing has him not let himself be spat on and he tears through Dabra with a single kick when not wanting to waste the time he could be potentially challenging Goku. Babidi slowly unleashes Pui Pui and Yakon on the group, while figuring out how to get out of the situation, until realising after Yakon's defeat, the darkness within Vegeta, with Majin Vegeta challenging Goku as normal. It's when the events at the Budokai Rin occur that 18 regroups with her husband and brother. Babidi would hold himself in his ship when having nobody to rely on, and with no other option, 17, 18, Kuririn, Gohan, Piccolo and Kaioshin launch a combined attack to destroy the ship and Babidi in an attempt to destroy Boo's cocoon. Though Goku and Vegeta still quickly fill the meter, and the shock of the attack awakening Boo, the attack did enough of a job to weaken him a fair bit. It still wouldn't be by enough for him to not quickly overpower the group when 17 mocks his appearance though. 17 and 18 are able to put up a fair fight, with Piccolo, Gohan and Kuririn backing them up, until Boo decides to turn 17 into a cookie and eat him, to 18's shock. She and Kuririn then launch a flurry of Kianzan before Gohan and Piccolo launch a Kamehameha and Gekiretu Kodan respectively, that end up wiping out Majin Buu completely without the need for Goku or Vegeta. Meanwhile, those two choose to keep the fight going with them still being completely even, with Goku knowing that it'll end in a draw as long as he doesn't go Super Saiyan 3. 
However, seeing how desperate Vegeta was to settle the score, and thinking of what could occur if he were to prove Vegeta's efforts in vain, Goku pulls a punch and allows Vegeta to gain the victory when both are nearly spent, with him giving his rival some closure before he returns to the afterlife later. After both take a senzu and rendezvous with the others, the Dragon Balls revive Seventeen, Kibito, and those Vegeta blasted. Speaking of which, Vegeta not redeeming himself leaves many members of the Dragon Team wary of him. Goku still decides to teach the kids the fusion dance, but also does so for Seventeen and Eighteen when learning how strong they are and the natural symmetry these twins have for teamwork. As such, they pick it up even quicker than Goten and Trunks, despite not wanting to use it when not absolutely necessary, given how much of a strange situation a male-female fusion would be. It's after this and spending time with his family that Goku's time eventually runs out as he gives a goodbye and gets a warmer than expected farewell from Vegeta, glad that their rivalry was settled. It's with this that things end in terms of the manga continuity for the what if. But, of course, many may be interested to see how Super is changed, as I'll go into, at least for its manga continuity. By this point, 17 and 18 are no longer as obsessed with validating themselves in pursuing greater power. But with how ridiculously strong Seventeen was from doing little prior to the Tournament of Power, they still end up stronger than perfected Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta in that arc by the time of Super's beginning. With no Boo to steal Beerus's pudding, Finns are a lot more cordial at Burma's party, but Beerus wouldn't leave without learning of Super Saiyan God. With the difference in Saiyans here, Tarbal is teleported to Earth with the Dragon Balls to aid in the ritual with Vegeta becoming the Super Saiyan God. Once Beerus still overpowers Vegeta after a quick fight, Seventeen challenges him when not impressed with the performance of the so-called God of the destruction and completely surprises the Hakaishin before he takes Finn seriously and quickly ragdolls Seventeen, as well as makes him irritated enough that Seventeen and Eighteen have to take Finn seriously too with fusion, becoming Artificial Human 35, and, considering how Vegito Blue was, end up overpowering Beerus's full power. But with his version of Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego causing him to remain even with them, despite Beerus being put on the defensive when his stamina starts to wane compared to 35, the fusion time limit is eventually reached, with Beerus win via technicality. Whis has taken enough of an interest in this to offer to train 17, 18 and Vegeta, which they all agree to. 18 only does so now and then though, when having to return to Earth regularly to care for Maron. Speaking of which, this leaves 18 on Earth around the time of Frieza's return, with her quickly dispatching the tyrant effortlessly. Seventeen and Eighteen take the place of Goku and Boo in the tournament against the Universe 6, in which Seventeen solos the whole thing. His performance has Zamasu wish to become Seventeen Black, and, without the need to test his limits and attain familiarity with Goku's body through the Saiyan trait, Black gets rid of Trunks before the latter has a chance to travel to the past and thereby is able to accomplish more with the Zero Mortal plan. However, he and Zamasu would inevitably be found and erased by Zeno eventually. The lack of Goku means the Tournament of Power never occurs, and the destruction of Universe 7 would occur sooner or later. No Frieza means the events with Broly or Granella never happen. Merus comes to Earth when hearing of Seventeen and Eighteen's capabilities, rather than to take Boo, and the Galactic Patrol eventually track Moro down to New Namek, where Seventeen quickly deals with him before he can regain his youth. The events of Superhero still occur, but with Gohan having nowhere near the key capable of challenging the Gammas, when having never gone through the ritual to achieve his ultimate state, or many battles after that, Orange Piccolo is able to put both of them in their place, and the Fusion of 35 is able to destroy Cell Max eventually. As for where all these changes bring Vegeta and Seventeen internally, Vegeta having fully resolved his rivalry with Goku, leads to him doing Shugyo purely to test his own limits, as with his GT self, though still aiming to surpass Seventeen. 
perfecting and evolving Super Saiyan Blue in time, though not acquiring Ultra Ego until far later than he normally would. Perhaps he would come to take Beerus' place in time, if Universe 7 lasts that long. As for Seventeen, despite Whis being even more interested in preparing him to be Beerus' successor, he refuses such a path, in not wanting to be confined by duties, and to live as free as he can, while still seeing how strong he can become. Approaching things from a GT perspective wouldn't lead to much, as no Goku vs Oob means Pilaf doesn't get the opportunity to even step on Dende's Shinden, and things are peaceful until the eventual day in which Baby would launch his grand superization plan. Thus, the story of if 17 and 18 further tapped into their vast potential comes to a close. If you liked this what if, leaving a like, subscribing and commenting would be appreciated. If there's enough demand for more, I may make this a more regular series on the channel, as there are a few others I have in mind.